President Buhari urges African leaders to form United Front to defeat terrorism and extremism. Nigeria and Portugal partner to promote science and technological innovations. Plus, federal government urged to declare state of emergency on malaria to reduce widespread prevalence. Okay. Hello, everyone. Warm welcome to NT International News on this hour. My name is Justin Bermunyan. It's glad to have you join us. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the present administration has taken concrete steps to develop the tourism sector as part of its diversification plans to grow the economy. The minister said this in Marrakesh, Morocco, where he is attending the African Ministers of Culture and Tourism Conference. The Nigeria is ready to embrace prospective investors to the nation's tourism sector. Anthony Forsen reports. Nigeria's Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, alongside five other ministers, formed the first panel that took a cursory look at the challenges inhibiting the sector in Africa. But for Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, Nigeria under President Mohamed Buhari has exhibited the political will to develop the sector and key it into national economic growth. We have set out so many things that the world wants to see. We are struggling at what we do here. What we are doing right now is to uh, ensure that we are able to leverage on this huge diversity in our country, a huge diversity in tourism, to make tourism the next order in Nigeria. The minister listed events that have unfolded, which gives the present administration the courage to be positive about the sector being able to contribute to economic growth. In 2015, we had about 14 local governments, out of 20 local governments in one state in one, all of the sovereign authority of the local government insurgency. Today, we do not have one local government or one commune under the authority. Peace has returned to the northeast. The high point of the meeting was a formal endorsement of the proposed charter by all the African ministers, signifying that in unison they have endorsed the document and will need it ratified for implementation. From Marrakesh in Morocco, Antony Fossen, NT News. Nigeria and Portugal have entered into a memorandum of understanding for partnership in the promotion of science, technology and innovation for the benefit of the two countries. This was the highlight of a meeting between Nigeria's Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, and his Portuguese counterpart, Professor Manuel Hayfo in Lisbon. He says Nigeria is set to expand her technological base through collaboration with other nations. The minister is in Lisbon to represent President Mohamed Buhari at a global forum for select group of government representatives and business innovators. Dr. Ono, who is the first vice chairman of the African Union Specialized Technical Committee on Education, Science and Technology, would also attend a meeting on technology acquisition in Argentina and World Bioethics Day and 20th anniversary of the AU resolution on bioethics and development of Africa in Yaoundé, Cameroon. The National Assembly says it is committed to sustainable peace and security in the country through its proactive legislation aimed at curbing extremism, militancy, and terrorism. This was part of the message of the Senate President Abubakar Bukola Sarake delivered at an African Leadership and Security Summit held in Abuja. Adela Justice has details. The summit with the theme, Sustainable Democracy, Security, Environment and Development, was organized by a non-governmental organization, Center for Peace and Environmental Justice, to draw attention to Pan-Africanism concept of solving problems. Issues for discussions were unemployment, poverty, injustice, security threat, polluted environment, and how they are linked to instability and underdevelopment. The Senate president represented by Senator Benga Shafa, who commended the timeliness of the summit, says the present assembly 
is in the business of legislation that will add value to Nigerians. One against terrorism, the other one against cybercrime. And then these are the two laws that, uh, as at now, will be able to assist us in curbing um, terrorism in whichever form you look at it. We believe that uh, the best way to talk about it is to organize conferences through non-violence approach. Let people know that our first formula is dialogue. Speakers agree that Africa must identify and address the root causes of some of the problems that manifest as militancy, terrorism, violent crimes, which have triple effect on national and global economy. The high point was the presentation of a peace plaque to the Nigerian military for her sustainable contribution to peace in Nigeria and Africa. Eddie No Justice, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari has urged African leaders to form a strong united front to defeat terrorism and violent extremism, which is inhibiting development in Africa. Receiving Kenya's Deputy President William Ruto at the State House, President Buhari expressed concern that the continent is still grappling with acts and efforts of terrorism after a successful decolonization campaign. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. President Muhammad Buhari described as worrisome that after a successful decolonization campaign, the continent of Africa is still grappling with acts and effects of terrorism. He said a situation in which insecurity continues to obstruct the process of development should not be allowed to continue. The president who acknowledged the valued cooperation between Nigeria and Kenya in the fight against terrorism commended the East African country for the recent successes recorded in containing the challenge of security in the region. On the forthcoming election of a new leadership for the African Union Commission, President Buhari advised African leaders to ensure that a strong person emerge so that member countries can be encouraged to refocus their resources and energy towards human and national development. He promised that Nigeria will hold robust consultations on the need for capable leadership that will respond to the current challenges facing the continent. Kenya's Foreign Affairs Minister, Ambassador Amina Muhammad, is vying for the position of chairperson of the African Union Commission. Deputy President William Ruto of Kenya commended President Muhammad Buhari for providing leadership in Africa, especially on regional security and the fight against corruption. The Nigerian leader's efforts at eradicating terrorism and violent extremism, he said, had emboldened the continent's resolve towards achieving lasting peace and security. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Minister of State Aviation Hadi Sirico says the aviation sector is pivotal to the growth of key economic sectors, including tourism, trade, and commerce. This was when the Senate Committee on Aviation visited the Ministry of Transport on Oversight. National Assembly correspondent Ifani Zumba reports on this and other activities of the committee in Abuja. The Minister of State also said capital budget implementation was focused on the completion of ongoing projects. And this ministry is to address safety and security concerns which are very paramount to the operations of the air industry. Government will once that is done, I'm sure, uh, we will succeed in establishing a national career. This national career will have minimum interference. After all, we have prominent Nigerians that are today managing airports like Tetut Airport. In another development, the Senate Committee on Culture and Tourism visited the National Council for Arts and Culture and National Institute for Hospitality and Tourism to assess their budget performance in 2016 and things militating against their performance to look at ways of assisting them. You know, NIOTO that is responsible for manpower training and capacity building, you know, needs to, you know, to be properly positioned. Uh, Nigerian Council for Arts and Culture, NCAC. We have seen too that it's supposed to be a regulatory body, but the law, you know, or the act, you know, on which in its existence pedestal is uh, such that, you know, they do not maximize, you know, their functions, you know, in such a way that, of course, they get better visibility. 
Also, the Senate Committee on Federal Character visited the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, where the Executive Secretary, Cha Uja, emphasized that the commission would strive to achieve zero abscondment in this year's pilgrimage. In his remark, the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Federal Character, Tijani Kaura, commended the commission for expanding their scope of pilgrimage to Mecca and Rome. Ifani Insumba continues. Wife of Bauchi State Governor Hajia Hadiza Abubakar has enjoined all Nigerians, irrespective of gender or religious leaning, to work towards achieving total peace in all aspects of Nigeria's national life. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that the governor's wife made the appeal at a workshop on peace building in Bauchi. Bauchi State, being the gateway to the northeast, might not have experienced much violence and other forms of conflicts like other states in the region. But the state have had its own share of arrest. It is for these reasons that wife of the state governor, Hadiza Abubakar, through her non-governmental organization, Bochi Sustainable Women, Economic Empowerment and Peace Initiative, Peace Week, organized peace building workshop for civil society groups religious and traditional institutions, as well as peace education for teachers and peace clubs in secondary schools. To set the ball rolling for the campaign, Bauchi State Governor Muhammad Abubakar, represented by his deputy Nogidado says, there is a vision in B-Sweep's peace building mission. We need to go deeper, check our community relations, check our attitudes, individually and collectively. Peace is seen as a state in which there is no war or fighting, an agreement to end a war or a period of time when there is no war. Peace is also an occurrence of harmony characterized by a lack of violence, conflict behavior, and the freedom from fear or violence. Indeed, this is what this sweeps peace initiative seeks to achieve. Having identified violence and conflict as antithetical to growth and development, participants at the workshop agreed equality, justice, empathy, and tolerance are key factors in peace building. They therefore stress the need for religious. For national integration to be fully entrenched in Nigeria, there is the need for a synergy between the wisdom of the old and the energy of the young to inculcate ethics and values and to promote national development. This was the submission of the 2016 conference organized by the Nigeria Institute of Public Relations held in Abuja. Olajide Bello reports. Serene night, less of speech making, but a time to climax series of events in the year by the FCT chapter of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and to also give self-appraisal to what has been achieved through the invaluable contributions of members. Chairman, NIPRF City Chapter, Tayo Hastro, described the night as a time to reward champions of national integration. We have studied, we have researched that these are great people doing a good job to the development of this country. We are you know, motivating them to do more because we need religious peace. They have shown it. Uh, an exemplary life in terms of religious tolerance, religious peace, and tranquility in Nigeria. For the award recipients, the recognition will serve as a moral booster to build more bridges of cohesion. I'm going to be more dedicated to that constitutional responsibility of holding the government accountable to the people, because that is the sole responsibility of a, of a journalist. I'm enjoying what I am doing. My major resolve in life is for me to make an impact to my generation. Having worked to unite Nigeria, integrate Nigeria for the past 21 years, so picking us from our suburb community in Kaduna and giving us this national award is uh, to propel us to do more. It shows clearly that religious leaders will have more positive role to play in integrations across Nigerians, irrespective of their religious, political, tribal or geopolitical leaning. Speakers in their goodwill messages gave the chapter a thumbs up for redefining public relations practice in the country. In Abuja, Abdullah Hajia, NT News. Economic experts at a one-day Champions Business Forum have predicted that Nigeria will soon hit its economic boom. 
The prediction is based on the steps taken by the present administration to address the economic recession in the country. Adebola Brooksley Sunday reports. Rethinking economic recession as a blessing which has exposed individuals, corporate bodies, and the nation of Eden errors, and now helping to correct the wrong financial behaviors was the focus of the meeting. Director News of the NTA, Ali Ubaba who represented the NTA's Director General, Yakubu Ebu Mohammed, and other economists submitted that Nigeria is on its way out of economic recession. So when you do what you are supposed to do, not to be shouting recession, not to be shouting Buhari, when you make the change within yourself, things will start happening. And you get, even when people are shouting, recession, you will not have the cause to shout. Have us what to have. We have all it takes. This country is a great country. In the shortest time, I will come out of this mess, mess we enter now. I don't mind. There is a lot of crime in the society. Mostly, they think of white collar jobs. But there are other jobs that can bring one or two things. The government is not turning back, coming back to agriculture as the backbone of the economy, manufacturing, solid minerals. That is what Nigeria has in abundance and fundamentally. Perhaps is the human resource, and we have everything. We are going to face economic boom, and it's just close by. But we have to put our acts together. One major advantage the forum pointed out was the fact that the recession has helped the nation to look inwards. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news on NT International, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Please stay tuned for more stories after the break. Thank you for being there. Guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria program asking the federal government to declare a state of emergency on malaria to reduce the widespread prevalence. They insist that this is expedient despite previous gains in malaria prevention and treatment. Abdul Malik Adil reports. Lethal and brutal, malaria is one of the major public health challenges in Nigeria with a high prevalence which accounts for about 110 million clinical cases annually in the country. It is also a leading cause of death and diseases in many developing countries where children and pregnant women are the most vulnerable. Malaria, malaria cost Nigeria over $2 billion worth of economic losses. Uh, by estimates, it stops our children from going to school, our workers from going to work. And the mistake we make, even within the health sector, is that we always equate fever to malaria. It is not true. A guest on Good Morning Nigeria say, to curb this scourge, it is important to tackle head-on the causative factors, ranging from lack of effective legislation and sanitation control, illiteracy, poverty, and poor environmental health. Then let's remember that mosquitoes do not only transmit malaria, they also transmit other diseases you know, from, from, from viral hemorrhagic fevers like West Nile fever and dengue fever. They also transmit filariasis, leishmaniasis. So honestly, mosquitoes are one of our greatest enemies. I, I call on the government to see how we can declare a state of emergency on malaria so as to see if we can do anything spectacular to, uh, to eliminate malaria. The discussion stressed that the culture of malaria prevention must be part of the fabric of life in every community to enhance the potential of new information and communication technologies 
in strengthening the capacity of skilled health workers and encouraging treatment. Until each and every one of us commits to the ideals of malaria control and eradication, Nigeria is going nowhere. The discussant maintained that community participation, successful parental effort, and media sensitization aimed at ensuring that the larger population sleep under mosquito bed net would create a spiral effect to reduce the total child mortality in the country. In Abuja, Abdumalik Adio, NTA News. And still on health matters, as part of activities to mark the 2016 World Pneumonia Day, observed on the 12th of November annually, Interested parties have urged the federal government to prioritize childhood pneumonia treatment by targeted interventions towards addressing its prevalence among under five children. This was at a media briefing by Partnership for Advocacy in Child and Family Health. Rashidot Mustafa Olagunju reports. Pneumonia is the second killer of under five children globally. Statistics shows that about 155 million children are infected with pneumonia, with pneumonia annually, while over 1.6 million of them die from the killer disease. Back home in Nigeria, about 14% of under five deaths is attributed to pneumonia. It is against this backdrop that people of like minds advocate the mainstreaming of pneumonia into national health planning. Ministry of Health should begin from the 2017 health sector budget to increase budget lines for the management of childhood pneumonia to sustain interventions aimed at stopping childhood pneumonia. Dedicated budget lines for childhood pneumonia management should be created at the Federal Ministry of Health. Implement the Childhood Pneumonia Treatment Guideline. The World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the Pediatric Association of Nigeria recommend that amoxicillin dispersible tablets should be used as the first-line drug in the management of childhood pneumonia. The federal government has been urged to strengthen and coordinate efforts towards ending childhood pneumonia. Established on the 12th of November 2009, the day is set aside to raise awareness on the toll of pneumonia on the society. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju, NTA News. Up next is Business News with Edeago. Welcome to Business News. Oil prices fell on Friday as the market will focus on a continuous fierce supply loom that is not expected to abate until OPEC and other producers cut output significantly. Brent crude traded at $45.24 per barrel, down 60 cents from their last close. U.S. West Texas Intermediate traded 66 cents lower at $44 per barrel. OPEC reported on Friday an increase in its output to another record high, pointing to an even larger surplus on the market next year. It said it pumped 33.64 million barrels per day last month, up from 214,000 barrels per day from September. And finally, the Nigerian equities market closed Friday on a negative note as the all share index depreciated to close at 26,170.88 basis points. That's it on business news. The rest of the news continues. I am Ede Ago. And for reports from other parts of the globe, here is Uche Nguizo. Lesotho say a faction of the country's ruling Democratic Congress has announced it would withdraw from the coalition government. There has been speculation over rising factionalism after the country's prime minister reshuffled his cabinet. From the United States comes the report that President-elect Donald Trump has praised protesters for being passionate about their country. This came hours after he accused them of being professional protesters who are incited by the media. The demonstrations that followed Trump's victory turned violent on the second day and police had arrested 29 suspects. 
Andrew Paul says the European Union has agreed to extend temporary border control inside the bloc's free travel zone for another three months to help cope with migrant crisis. In October, the European Commission recommended that countries within the Schengen zone be allowed to continue carrying out border checks beyond November 15, when the checks are due to end. Finally, Zimbabwe High Court has dropped the charges against a professional hunter who killed the country's prized lion, Cecil, in 2015. The killing of the 13-year-old cat, which was attraction to Zimbabwe's major national park, sparked international outcry. Uche Nwizu, NTA News. And to sports now, a former Senate president calls on Super Eagles to go for a victory against Algeria as Obama receives Cleveland Cavaliers at the White House. Amazi Marcos reports. The technical crew and players of the Super Eagles are optimistic of earning the three points against the Phoenix of Algeria on Saturday in Uyo in their second Group B match of the Russia 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifier. Addressing a press conference at the Aquaibom State Capital, technical advisor Gennot Rowe dismissed fears on the absence of first-choice goalkeeper Carly Kemi, emphasizing their capable replacements while admitting the strength of the North Africans. And we must be strong on the wings, defensively too. The game is the most, most important thing. We want to make sure we win. Correspondent John Paul Alumuna reports the Akwai Bomb State Government has been working hard to ensure a successful outing at the Goswil Akpabio International Stadium, Uyo. Meanwhile, former Senate President David Mark has urged the Super Eagles to put behind their victory against Zambia in Indola as they file out against the Phoenix of Algeria in Uyo on Saturday, bearing in mind that a win will boost their chances of qualifying for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. We're too big a nation not to qualify for the World Cup. At any given moment, even with our second level, we should qualify for the World Cup. I think that's the sort of determination the players should go into the field with. NBA champions Cleveland Cavaliers were guests of President Barack Obama of the U.S. on Thursday in Washington as he saluted the team for rallying from behind to defeat the Golden State Warriors. Obama singled out some players for praise with emphasis on LeBron James, who won the MVP award during the championship series. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. On Saturday's weather for Nigeria and some world cities. That's the much we have for you on this hour. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Justin Bem Uyu.
welcome to your favorite program. If you're just joining us for the very first time, this is Entertainment Gist. I am Cynthia Mayogo, and thank you for joining us once again. Today's episode, we start with the big news coming from the Peace Square household. Yes, they are back together. All the drama has ended as Peter was seen apologizing to the Peace Square fans on the social media, saying that his behavior recently was counter. Productive. Meanwhile, Paul and Jude have accepted his apology as we saw Paul posting a picture captioning it, family is everything. So officially, Jude Angels Okoye is back as the manager of Peace Square. Wow, exciting news if you ask me because the drama was taking too long. Yes, moving on, we're looking at David Doe, who is on to something interesting and inspiring. Yes, is now ready to start a scholarship program under the Veronica Adeleke Foundation in honor of his mother. This is really, really inspiring and kudos to him. I hope other celebrities follow suit. Next up, Entertainment Gist crew went out and about here in Abuja and there was an event titled Art Night Out. It was a fusion of art, fashion, and the exciting part of it, classical music. Not just music, not hip hop or Arabic, classical music, and it is amazing. But you know now, I'm not here to tell you why it is amazing, but we're here to show you the highlights of how it went down. Hi, my name is Lilia Karofa, and I'm the organizer of the event. It's called Art Night Out. I'm the founder of theglowingcolors.com, a website about African fashion, art, and business. And um, we planned this event together with Thought Pyramid so that we're able to mirror exactly what the website does. And most importantly, we want to inspire the next generation about the importance of art and fashion and also appreciation of the craftsmanship of what our fashion designers and what our artists do. Okay, so it's uh, at night out here at um, Thought Pyramid and uh, the idea was to bring in a blend of modern and contemporary art uh, that would be affordable you know, for people to buy. But then we decided to theme it, uh, let it be very exciting, bringing a lot of like mixed media works, a lot of um, interesting um, media type works. Um, if you see, I'm behind um, a new sprint uh, um, work by Uche Ogoro. It's a very recent, it's a very recent piece. I'm very exciting. There's so many other pieces. We have works by people like Tola Aliki, Obina Makata, who is doing very great at the moment. Blends Ankara and um, and pen works, you know, in in, in in what it does. So very very exciting um, exhibition, I must say. This one is inspired by Grecian goddess. So I, this uh, mostly I did uh, couture dresses for this exhibit so that it can show more of the talent that it's not too simple pieces. So we wanted to do something to wow the audience. Okay. That because you get inspired by seeing some art pieces, music sometimes when you listen to music you can get inspired to come up with a beautiful piece. Church Aladdinma. Well, as she said, I am also um, a Catholic um, singer. I sing in the church, and um, from there I went to the United States to study. Do we look forward to more shows like this with the 
tenors? Yeah, um, well, with the tenors, um, she's better to answer the question. But um, this is a very, very good initiative, like I said to the other interview. It is really, really nice to promote classical music in Nigeria. I hope um, we have more donors, because I think the problem with classical music in Nigeria is less. Arts, entertainment, music, everything about arts is wonderful. And it, I mean, it pays. But the problem is we don't appreciate it here in Nigeria. So we really, really need encouragement. that just went down. Yes, so they were telling us a few things about the Nigerian tenors, right? So, how did this group come about? The group started as a love of music. Most of us here, we all love music. Okay. So we came about, we gathered gradually. Sometimes we have to go to gardens to go and rehearse with this young man here, carrying keyboards and playing. And we eventually formed a very good team where we now discovered that, that beyond Abuja, there are other talents outside Abuja, so we also invited them to join, and they've been coming because of the love of music and the promotion of classical music in Nigeria. It's been a lovely evening because uh, you have uh, so much paintings to look at, very inspiring paintings, and then classical music, which is not something that is uh, very familiar with Nigerians, but here you have an opportunity to listen to it and also uh, see how it's uh, it's done. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful you event. It? Really good. One of the best I've been to. Okay, so you expect to see more of this. I hope to see more of this. And if I don't see more of this, I'll be angry. So. <laughs> agree with me that classical music is indeed amazing. All right, next up, we're looking at our movie celebrities, starting off with Obi Emiloye, whose movie, Oxford Gardens, premiered in 2015 here in Nigeria. But the exciting part now is that movie is set to be premiered at the British Academy for Film and Television Arts Building. That is the BAFTA building. Long story. Come down, come down. Today was your last day ever. How would you spend it? And if you ask me, it's a very promising one for this movie director. Speaking of movie directors, we are on to Funke Akindere and Chioma Chukuka Akota, who have come out to lend their voice against piracy. As recently, Funke Akindele was warning her fans against pirated copies of The Jennifer's Diary. We all know she's putting a lot of work, sleepless nights, and everything into this production and it's so unfair that someone else that didn't do all the work gets all the financial benefits so please be on the lookout for pirated copies don't patronize them all right that's enough now we're looking at messi aiba gentry who is now one of the biggest celebrities in nigeria has she now have her own personal app this is due to the huge endorsement deal she just signed recently with an ICT company. So it's safe to say that Aiba Gentry is now like the Kim Kardashians of Hollywood, as we can now follow her and know what she's up to. Kudos to her, 
Kudos to all our favorite celebrities getting huge endorsement deals and making us proud. But right now, let's just go and check out our movie trailers for today. Entertainment just continues right after that. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. I can't let you do this. It's not up to you. To Jamaica. Somebody call 911. Shot in fire burning on the dance floor. Esto para todas las mujeres que están en candela. Baby, you on fire. Sean Kingston, Mr. 305. Wild 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 Welcome to Jamaica, big man. Jarrah to Fried Rice. What is a goddess like you doing out here on the beach, alone? And who says I'm alone? What's that all about? Nothing. Can't you have a conversation with my sister? You know something for Ijora? Amy Bola, stop. A trip to Jamaica. Just joining us, this is still entertainment, just the program where you get just the details about your favorite celebrity. Yes, I am so looking forward to watching that trip to Jamaica, right? Interesting movie trailers right there. All right, now we are back to our home, homeland where we have exciting stories for you. Tiwa Savage recently has signed a huge record deal with Jay-Z's Rock Nation. Yes, we all know about that. But now she's told us that they didn't sign her to change her. Instead, they are willing to showcase her the way she is and what she has to offer. And we all know that she's going to do exceedingly well. And you'll be wondering why she didn't make a big deal out of it. She's told us that so many artists that we know and have heard about have had huge endorsement deals with foreign arts, but we all know that nothing really comes out of it. But it's still a savage now. Nah, we know that she's going to be dope. And fingers crossed, she'll be amazing. And still on record deals, we're looking at Inyaya, who we know left Triple MG with the blessings of Hubert Franklin. But now is signed on to a new management named Temple Management. And of course, his new album will be dropping under this record label. Speaking of former record label mates, Emma Naira, who also left Triple MG a year ago, she has announced the release of her first body of work. And it's an EP titled Love Vs. Money. Very interesting title if you ask me. And I'm still looking forward to it anyway. Right now, let's just go and check out our new and trending music videos. You know how we do it. They're always dope. 
Check it out. Rushing like you water from the tap. Or they find yourself, they cut you tap. They said the bomb shot is set for your life. That's what they call me. I've been chilling right here, it's what I be. Sick flow in your veins like an IV. I call it a caress with an ID. I'm so hot, I can make the sun sweat. If you stop me dancing, it will don't set. I'm going in hard when you're done wet. I strong face, open eyes, yes, shit. An assassin right now, I'm killing time. Oh, why you not here, then get more sign. You chop on this guy, he got on the line. Spray me all the money to the last time. I seen your behind, so you can't front. If I give an attitude, yo, I'm just blunt. Inhale, exhale, puff a blunt. You can't touch me, or you get burnt. Your girlfriend's my ex, no ex, why? See on my chest, cause I'm so fly. I'm so fly, no cash. DJ. More dudes, vocal low. My Jackie, yo, really full. On more dudes. Yes, we are back from our new and trending music videos, but right now we are on to the 2016 MTV Video Music Award nominee list that is here. We have 
Queen B, Beyonce with 11 nominations, and the British singer Adele with 8 nominations. The nomination list was revealed on Facebook Live and will be airing live also from New York's Madison Square Garden. So, fingers crossed, we all hope Beyonce wins at various categories, right? Then again, we are looking at Yemi Alade, who has hit 1 million followers on Instagram. Woo! I'm very sure I'm one of those fans, you know. Congratulations to her, and we know her fan base is growing, and she's doing exceedingly well for us. Yes, she's working for with the fans. Next up, we are looking at Bo V, who has been off the screen for some time, but now is back with a hit movie titled For One Love. Are you talking to me? You killed him! I love you from the bottom of my heart, and I will die doing it for you. That poor man is in a wheelchair mourning his daughter. The man is a billionaire. So stop getting in his business between him and God. Face your own business and collect from him, because as a matter of fact, you not collecting from him, you are stopping God from giving. Love. And it's co-starring with Alex Akubo, Lilian Esoro, and a whole lot of other interesting Nigerian celebrities. Ah, that movie will be dope. But right now, let's just go and check out our comedy skits today. Wow, how time flies. We've come to the end of today's episode of your favorite program, Entertainment. Just, I hope you'll be joining us next week. But meanwhile, I need you to tell your friends to tell their friends to join us next week for a fresher and better episode of your favorite program where you get juicy details about your favorite celebrities. I am Cynthia Bayoga, and it's been my pleasure giving you the gist. See you next week. Let me be the one to take care of you well, well. She am a kai. It is so clear that together we are so clear. Your mama teach you when you listen to her. When you are dancing for me, you making my head too swell. She am a kai. Because of you, I fit to fall inside the deep well. She am a kai. She am a kai. She am a kai. She am a kai. So your mama teach you. To her when you wear, she am a kaye. When you dancing for me, you making my hair too sweat. She am a kaye. Let me be the one to take care of you. Well, well. She am a kaye. She am a kaye. She am a kaye. Yeah. You be the reason why the boys come they double. Your beauty rushing like you water from the tap. Imagine a station where you access information. Think of a station that creates awareness for national development. Imagine a station that prepares you for a bright and greater future. A station for all ages. Documentaries, 
classroom and television, events coverage, children's programs, and variety shows. Always stay tuned to NTA Knowledge on the Star Times platform, Channel 359. For partnership, sponsorship, and advert placements, contact us on NTA Knowledge. NTA Knowledge, led to growing horizon. Badagri, lined with coconut trees, can best be described as a coconut town in Nigeria. But the coconut traders don't seem to have enough products to sell. Still, we gather 